Let me begin, Paul, by not calling you Sir Paul, because you don't like being called Sir Paul, do you? I don't. You're right. What do you think of the science of this clock? I think it looks a very interesting mechanical machine. I'm, I'm very put, impressed. I'm going to put the battery in, and I'd like you to count us down, please. It's not high, high, high tech, but it works. Good. I hope. Shall Here I we start go. counting down? Here we are. Five, four, three, two, one, go. When you open your eyes in the morning, are you really excited about going to work? I'm always tremendously excited um, before I go to work. Why does science excite you? Science is trying to understand how the world works and how we work, and I'm a very curious person, and every day I wake up, I want to know a bit more about that. So do you feel you learn new things every day? I do learn things, and I learn um, that some of the things I thought I knew before were not right. Science can sometimes bore you, can't it? Well, the actual process of it, of working in a laboratory, quite often is quite dull, but it is compensated when you find something out really new. And there's a eureka moment. Just occasionally, but not very often, it must be said. What do you think is the key to getting children interested in and excited about science at school? I think it's to um, encourage their natural curiosity. Children are very curious about the world, and if we can really encourage that with enthusiasm, that's the way to turn them on. What is essential to good science? Um, a sceptical approach, a respect for good data and observation, and... A, a, a recognition that you have to take on all the observations and all the data and finally being honest. And bad science, is that just the reverse of that? It's the reverse of all of those things. Can you describe the moment to me when you won, you shared the Nobel Prize in one of the science categories, back in 2001, I think? When I heard about it, they told me, um, I had a message on my um, mobile phone and I couldn't quite believe that it was true. In fact, I thought they were asking me to comment on somebody else who'd won it. Only after listening to it two or three times did I realise they were talking about me. And can you sum up what you won it for? All things, living things, are made of cells. You started as a single cell, so did I. What I and my colleagues worked on, because I won it with two others, is what controls the division of a cell from one to two to four. The basis of growth and development of all living things, and it goes wrong in cancer. Can you sum up genetics for me in 20 seconds? Genetics is the, um, the science that describes heredity. That is um, why you look a bit like your mother and father or your, or your grandmother and grandfather, how you inherit traits through one generation to another. And following on from that, why does genetics matter so much? Well, genetics matters because, um, to us because we inherit these genes. And what are we? Are we a consequence of our genes or our, our environment? The truth is we're a consequence of both. We don't yet know, do we, quite how life came about. The actual um, uh, arousal of life, 3.7, 3.8 billion years ago, we don't really know how that came about. Once it was there and once life was going, we can understand how um, complicated organisms like ourselves uh, come about by evolution, by natural selection. But how life came about, not so clear. At this very moment of talking to me, what do you think is the most important scientific discovery of all time? I think I would choose Isaac Newton's um, Laws of Motion because it made sense of the world and it was one of the very first pieces of science. So I'd choose Isaac Newton. So it follows from that that he is also the most important scientist ever? He is an important scientist, but he wasn't a very nice man. Why do you say that? He was rather uh, spiteful and, uh, and not very good with um, those that he saw as his competitors. Who is your hero growing up? I think I had two heroes, one contemporary, Francis Crick, who um, was one of the uh, uh, um, individuals who created the molecular biology revolution, and then, of course, Charles Darwin. Now, it's true, isn't it, that you grew up thinking that your grandparents were your parents and that your mother was your sister, and you didn't discover that this wasn't the case until all three had died? Well... It, you, I got confused, as you got confused then. I grew up thinking... I was right, my, then, wasn't I? <laughs> yeah, well, you, well you, I grew up thinking um, that my grandparents were indeed my parents, and um, the person I thought um, was my sister was actually my mother. And I didn't find this out until a few years ago, and you're quite right, they'd all died. And you still don't know who your father is or was? I'm afraid I don't.
What is your relationship with risk? I'm probably just on the edge of taking risks because I do certain activities that some people think are a bit risky. What was going through your mind when the undercarriage of the plane you were flying jammed? It was very interesting. I was floating in the sky, the sun was shining, and I was thinking, what's going to happen 90 seconds from now when I have to get this thing on the ground with no wheel underneath me? Do you believe in life after death? I don't believe in life after death. And that <laughs> is five minutes with you. That's fantastic. How have you recovered from your quadruple bypass heart surgery fantastic, of last year? Fantastically well. I'm really fit. Coming closer to the concept of death, did that change your view of it? Do you know, when I was faced with death, it didn't seem quite as awful as I thought it might do. And you're very happy now? I'm very happy now. So Paul Nurse. Paul Nurse, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Matt.